Hey everyone, this is Iman Shru and welcome back to my channel Salesforce Makes Sense and we'll continue understanding and learning Apex development through our Salesforce developer masterclass curriculum. We have started understanding database operations in our previous video or previous tutorial. We understood how to, you know, write, insert, update and delete statements, right? By this class, understanding database operations. We'll now continue our journey and try to write some more database operations independently and we'll try to see some four or five different use cases. And with that understanding and with that knowledge, we'll proceed ahead. All right. So before jumping into that, I believe and I hope you have seen the Sockel and Saucel video, right? Because that's that's a more like a prerequisite that you need whenever you are doing database operations, right? And whenever you're data, doing database operations, if you're inserting a new record, it's fine. But if you want to modify that already exists in the ecosystem or in the database, right? You have to query it out. You have to search it out. So Sockel and Saucel are important lessons to learn and important things to understand and master before you actually conquer database operations okay so what we'll do is we'll start with a use case and before starting with one use case on the database we will talk about something that database class provides okay so if you take a look at what we did here right the last the last session we use the insert command we use the update command and we use the delete command now what are these these are dml statements data manipulation language statements right that modify or that manipulate the data now salesforce has its own class that's called the database class okay and instead of writing something like a plain insert you can write the same thing as database dot insert you can do this, right? So database is a class that has these methods, insert, update, and delete, and you can pass in two parameters to it. The first parameter being your actual list of records that you want to basically insert, update, or delete, and then a Boolean flag. It can either be true or false, right? So database related methods and DML statements are two ways to do your database operations. In the last tutorial, we looked at just the plain DML statements and here what I'm showing you is your database operations or database methods. Okay. Why do I call it a method? Because see, this is followed by the dot operator. So this is a class. This is the dot operator and this is a static method in the database class, right? I hope you understand this nomenclature now. And then it is a method because it has open and close param parenthesis and then it is accepting parameters. Okay. So it has two parameters. This Boolean flag that I'm talking about that can either be set to true or false is by default set to true. Okay. If you want to set it to false, what does that mean? That means that you are trying to insert an account list if there are five records. And if you want the system to allow inserting three records, and if the two records, the other two records fail, I still want to continue and insert the three records more like a partial processing right? You want to do a partial successful transaction. In that case, you mark it as false. Okay. And if I save it, this line will save up fine. And the insert command runs pretty much the same way. The only difference being that this Boolean flag takes care of whether you want to allow partial processing or not. Okay. So partial processing means if there are 50 records and one of them failed, should all the 49 records be rolled back? Or should they be allowed to make that update on the database? If you want them to be making updates on the database, you want partial processing, you set the Boolean parameter to false. Okay. And if you don't want it to be partially processed, meaning if one record fails out of 5,000, don't do anything with the 5,000, just roll back. Okay. Don't, don't proceed, proceed ahead with any of the records. In that case, you keep it as true. Okay. So that's just one quick thing I wanted to tell you and we'll look at we'll try to do the use cases or just simple plain use cases with both the commands the dml statements and the database methods all right great so now let's let me quickly start with the very first use case so we'll go to database operations and let's take a look at the very first one so the first one is insert an account record okay now now, now, now see what I'm trying to do here. I've laid the entire foundation with all the basics, with all the keywords, with all uh, plain use cases that we did. We understood different kind of keywords. We understood Sockel, Saucel. We understood all the oops concepts. We understood the very basic foundation of Apex. And now we'll try to start integrating uh, all our learnings with the database operations. Okay. 
we've understood s objects we've understood how to call methods how to write methods so all of that as and when we proceed with our tutorials we'll see we are using all of our learnings from the previous tutorials into into the new ones okay and my understanding and my assumption is that you are familiar familiar with what i'm saying as you know uh, yes we did that in the last session right or some video so you should be aware of it Okay, if you are someone who's looking at this video for the very first time and you have not taken a look at the entire developer curriculum, please go back and start from chapter one. That would give you a very good uh, solid uh, kickstart. Okay, so for those of you who are following, let's start by inserting an account record. Okay, we'll be inserting an account record. I'll just go ahead and create a new Apex class for this use case. All right, I'll create a new method. Public static void create account records. Okay, the best thing about how I'm approaching this is you will see errors showing up. That's the best thing. You'll see fields missing, validation rules running. You'll see some uh, exceptions happening and we'll tackle and target them together. Why is that an approach that I take that is helpful according to me? Because if I have a pre pre planned script, right? So that would be error free for sure, right? Because I'll only be showing you the happy path. I'll only be showing you everything that runs fine, but that's not real life, right? You get errors, you get a lot of failures, you get a lot of uh, issues when you're writing code and even when you're saving it, when you're debugging it. I want to go through that entire journey so that let's say you get an error here right you'll see that oh, okay this is how the error comes up oh this is why the error has come up ah okay this is how you solve it and th then you proceed with the success scenario so we'll try to take that kind of approach and that's the kind of approach i take with all of my, all of my tutorials okay i hope that makes sense in this use case we'll insert account records all right so how do you first of all if you have to insert an account record what do you have to do you have to instantiate so i'll say account acc equals new account all right now what are the fields that I need to map? Do I know? We do not know that, right? So one way of doing it is taking a look at the documentation and then taking a look at what are the mandatory fields, all right, for account object. The other thing is if you go to Salesforce org, you can go to the account uh, page layout or you can go to the account object and take a look at what are the required fields. So if I go to accounts, so I'm switched to the classic experience because I find this a bit, bit faster. I'll say new. So if I say new here, see, I am seeing that only the account name is mandatory because it has this red symbol here. Everything else is not. All right. So I can go ahead and say account dot name equals first account. All right. And with just this understanding, I can go ahead and say insert account. That would insert an account provided everything goes right. Okay. If I want to mess it up, let's get rid of this and say save. Okay, so I'm just instantiating the account and I'm saying insert account. I'll just go ahead and try to execute this. So I'll say handle database operations dot create account records. Execute. So you see, I'm getting an error required field missing. So if you're trying to insert, if you're trying to create a record and you have not given the mandatory fields, your insertion will fail. The same is with update. Okay, you have to ensure all the mandatory fields are populated, they're not empty, right? Whatever the, is the object demand, you fulfill that. So I'll go, go ahead and say account.name equals first, first account, and I'll just say execute it again. So this time it executed fine. I'll say cancel here. And if I take a look at my list, list view, you see first account has been created. Only the name is populated, nothing else is populated. Why? Because I only mapped one key. All right. This is taking some time to load while that happens. So what I did is I used the dot operator to map the fields. Is there any other way to write the same thing? I can do the same by removing this entire line from here and putting the key value pairs here. Even this is a way. So I can say name equals second account and even this will save up fine. And this is just another way of writing all your fields comma separated the rating equals warm. Okay. Number of number of employees equals one four five double zero sic code equals one four five one right let me try to save it first of all 
okay this is my understanding that the api name of each field is name rating number of employee sic code and you see i have given the values to them i have given this as a string my understanding rating is also a pick list i have given the string number of employees is a number and sic code is also a number my understanding right so i just go ahead and say saved said save save so line number four is giving an error what is the error it says field does not exist field does not exist sic code and number of employees right so there's some error so you see i see employees and i see sic code those fields are there but my api name might be wrong, wrong. So I have to go back and check. So how do I check on developer console? I can simply open the account.obj file. See, your objects are also listed here, account.obj. What is the faster way of searching only objects? If I put a star and I say obj, all your objects will be listed. Okay, so I'll say account.obj. Let's open this. This will show you all the fields of this object. Let's search for employees. So you see, number of employees is an integer which is fine but the api name is number of employees not no so let me just fix it number of employees now if i take a look at the errors i should not see two errors only one error should show up why number of employees is fixed now sic code right so what about sic code see sic code is there and it is just sic so i'll just go ahead and say sic that's the api name but when i try to save it i'll still get an error okay so earlier it was saying field does not exist because sic code api name was incorrect you always have to have your api names correct okay and once you have your api name correct and i'm just trying to save it this is taking time to save let's see yeah and now the error shows illegal assignment from integer to string what i've done is i've given an integer value to a field that is to a variable that is of type string so it's saying integer to string in legal assignment so i have to ensure that this is not a number this is a string and now when i save it my fields are mapped in the method parameter itself right as the constructor kind of a thing and then i'm just putting the insert account statement okay let's try to save it first of all it should save a fine now and i'll just try to execute this method to insert the second account saved a fine let's go ahead and say execute executed fine let's go back to our list view let's take a look at whether the second record has shown up now second account has come right and the second account will have all the other fields also like the three four fields that we populated see 14500 1452 1451 rating is warm so all good all right let's try to do the same by using a database method right so if i remove the insert command from here and i say this would be my third account rating would be let's say hot number of employees and sic is fine i'll say database dot insert acc first of all let me try to save it with one parameter okay let's see whether it saves out or not so i'm using the database method and it is the insert method what have i passed i've passed the account account attribute which is the account record okay so i'll just go ahead and say execute works fine the third account must have been created in salesforce let's take a look refresh the third account is created see this particular method has different variants meaning what does it mean it means method overloading right the first thing is you can actually just pass one s object i have passed one s object of type account can I pass a list of accounts? Yes, that's the second method. That, that is the second type of overloaded method. Okay. And then if you notice, I did not pass the second parameter, which is why it took it as true by default. But I think if I need to pass false, meaning partial processing should be enabled, I can save this method with second parameter also. That's another version of it. Okay. So here it will not make sense because I'm just creating one account. But let me show you how this would look like. Account ACC2 equals new account and i'll say this is my fourth and this is my fifth account okay and fifth account and i'll just try to let's say not have a name here on the fifth account and i'll say save okay so this is account one this is account two and what i want to do is i want to create a list and i want to pass that list so list account list to insert 
equals new list of account. We are just instantiating our list variable. And what I want to do is I want to simply pass ACC1, comma ACC2 to my list. Okay, and I want to use this list variable and I want it to pass it, I want to pass it to the insert method. Okay, and I'm saying partial processing should be allowed. So that's why I've just said false. Okay, meaning if something goes wrong with account one or account two and the other one is fine, go ahead and insert the other one. Let's give it a test now. So our, our understanding is account one will pass, it will insert, but account two will fail. Why? The required name is missing, required field is missing, error should show up. Okay, let's give it a try and see what happens. Let's just hit. So it, it has ran and if you take a look at the logs, it is a success log. If I take a look at my list and I say refresh, after the third account, you will only see fourth account. The fifth account has not come up because it has not been created. Okay, so it has only created the first account which was successful, which, which was successful. The second one was let go. So partial processing was enabled and the second account did not show up. Why? Because the name is missing. All right. So that's how you can use your normal DML statements and that's how you can also use the database methods and you can enable partial processing. Okay, great. That was our first simple use case. We'll continue our journey in the next video.